In this video, we'll recreate Apple's dynamic island feature in Figma. And we'll cover things like drag interactions, delays, and click animations to create something like this. Now, I know your time is valuable, so let's jump straight in. Okay, everyone, so we're in Figma and we're gonna look at the end result as a first step here. But before we go into that, this file, this Figma file is gonna be available in the comments below. So if you wanna follow along during the tutorial, there's the file. Now, if we go into this animation and we hit C so that we see the full animation, let's dissect it. Drag interaction, that's the first thing happening. We drag this to the top, then if you look here, there's a delay and after the delay, you can see how this thing that we drag goes out of screen and the pill, the dynamic island expands in width. We see this little cover art and this wave icon popping up. So that's the first part of it. First interaction, we drag it. That's all that's happening. Then we have a delay interaction and then we have a click interaction. So I click it and everything expands. So this increases in size. We see the text here. This goes to the right, this wave icon, and we get these play buttons and this progress bar. We click it again, it goes back. So that's the full interaction. Now let's recreate it. Oh, and if you're not super familiar with Smart Animate, I have a video dedicated to just that. So check that out and then get back to this video after if you're not feeling super confident. So the creation process here, what we start with is we just dissect all the pieces. So we have the iPhone screen or the iPhone mockup, I should say. We have the phone screen, we have the music player container, and we have the dynamic island. Now, I won't be recreating these from scratch. I'll just take these pieces and recreate the animation because that's what this tutorial is about. So I'll copy this frame, take the iPhone screen, copy that as well, put it inside of the frame. So it's inside of the frame here. I'll take the music player container, put it inside of the screen here because this is important. The screen has clip content. And this is gonna be used when we push the music player container with the drag interaction or the delayed interaction after the drag interaction, when that is pushed outside of the frame. This clip content helps us in this case. So I take that, put it inside of screen. Then I take dynamic island here. I put that inside of screen as well. Push it to the top, nudge it down a bit like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. So now we have something like this. We've gathered all our elements. Let's take this, drag it down here, and let's create the first interaction. So what we can see here immediately is, and if we go back to the animation, this dynamic island should be shrunken down as a first step. So let's take this, take the different elements. I'll actually decrease those elements in size. So I hit K, which is the scale tool. And this is an amazing tool. It helps you scale everything. So you can take whatever you have and just hit K and then resize it. And everything within it, even though it's text, even though whatever it is, it's gonna scale up or down. So I take the K tool, drag it down in size, do the same for this, drag it down in size like that. And the reason I'm doing that is because if we rewatch this together, drag and reaction, boom. When I click here, you can see how these things kind of bubble up. So if we watch it again, the text bubbles up, the size of the cover art bubbles up, and these play items and the progress bar bubbles up as well. They go from smaller size to bigger size. So I decrease the size here, decrease the size there as well. I'll change this height of the whole frame to 48. I'll move these to the center, move this in here, move this up here decrease the size or the width, grab the items and place them, center them a bit. Then I'll take the image and the text and fade them out as well. Now I think we have something that looks similar, yes. Okay, so this is the entry state. We have this player and what we want to happen here is on drag, it should decrease in size and it should blur out. So I copy the frame, I target this music player container, hit prototype. So I'll add an interaction to this screen on drag, smart animate, custom spring. 
and yeah, let's say 350, and I think this is good, maybe 150, 35, and you can see how that decreases the time here. So this is something you should play around with to find the right kind of timing and the right kind of stiffness, damping, mass, etc. But I think this is what we want in terms of animation. So I'll take the K tool again, sorry, not on the whole thing, but on the music player container. And I'll hold down shift and option so that we center it. We decrease the size from all sides, drag it down to that size maybe. And I'll go into design, set layer blur to 32. You can play around with this as well, maybe even 56. Now let's look at this flow one. That looks good. It works the same as in the first prototype. So that's the first interaction. Now let's bump it down one step. The second interaction. Now we go from this dynamic island not having any content except for the camera to having this little avatar or cover art with this waveform as well. I'll take this screen, I'll duplicate that. We'll increase the width of this. Maybe that's a bit too wide, 256 maybe. I'll take the wave, push it in here, something like that. And let me see here if we actually gave the wave opacity. We didn't, so this has to be zero in opacity as well. Then we have the image, which is gonna go full opacity when we click this. Now, I made another mistake here because I set the full image plus text to have zero in opacity. But we actually, in this instance, just want the image to appear. So we should separate those. So instead of having zero opacity on this group or this auto layout, I'll set it to these individual items, maybe like that. So I'll go back to the image plus text and set that to zero opacity. I'll also, just for this to look better, make it rounded, even though Apple didn't have it rounded in their version. I'll decrease the size of this whole thing, again, using K, something like that maybe. And now the pixels aren't gonna be perfect here. Once again, this is just to show you how the animations work. Okay, so there we have it expanded. So now if we click on this frame, take prototype, drag it over here. After delay this time, one millisecond, because we want it to occur as fast as possible. Smart animate, and let's try this same animation. I do think, though, that we want some bounce in it. So I'll take this little ball here, this circle, and I'll create this slight little curve like this, which gives us a bounce. So we have that bounce. Now let's go back to the animation and see how it looks. Oh. Can you see what happens here? In the first animation, something happens. These things appear. So we see the waveform, we see the cover art, we see the text. This is because we changed the opacity of this block in this screen or in this frame and in this frame, but we didn't change it here. This should be 100% opacity here and zero on these. If we go back, and I missed one more thing. The waves here should also be zero opacity and I bring them to the middle. Now we're talking, boom. Let's get to the last step here. Now we want the click interaction that expands this whole thing. So we go from this little dynamic island, little pill form to this bigger thing that gives us some more flexibility in terms of what types of buttons and things we can include because we have more space. Let's duplicate this frame again and let's start by expanding the height or increasing the height. So maybe something like this, let's say 350. I'll drag this out to the sides as well. Take this, I'll add opacity to the text as well. Hit K again to save some time, increase the size of it. I'll go into this and change the border radius. So it's a rectangle with some radius instead, let's say 24. And as you can see, I'm really just free basing here, not giving it correct paddings or anything like that, because once again, this tutorial is about the animation. 
So I'll push this to the side. Then we had the player. This is going to increase in size as well. Maybe somewhere like that. And the height of this doesn't have to be quite this much. Maybe something like this. The camera is going to change between the animations. It wouldn't do that in real life because it's hardware. It's going to stay put. So there we have that end state. Okay. Now, if we go to the previous frame, hit prototype, go to this dynamic island, we drag onto the next frame, on click, smart animate, and let's say 500 here, maybe. And when we click this, it's going to go back to that previous frame. Now, let's see, drag, boom, click, and it works. Now, if you want to dig deeper into animations, check out these videos here. And until the next one, take care and we'll talk soon. Ciao.